face, they want to look at your skin really close, they say, don't wear any makeup. Depending on what you're casting for, depending on how many castings you have, an ecom casting or one where you know they're going to be taking photos with flash photography, especially if it's a sports casting or a catwalk casting or probably not a TV commercial casting. <laughs> basis of this makeup is one keep it supernatural two do what works for you three accentuate your best parts or cover up the parts that are slightly not as good and five still keep it natural yeah <laughs> hi i'm rocky and i'm going to show you how i create the perfect makeup look for my model castings so i've got a day full of castings today so i thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to film how i do my makeup because i know there's been a lot of questions on this but i actually did not think I was going to be able to do this today because when I went to bed last night, my skin was so bad. I had like almost this complete bumpy rash across my forehead. I have this spot because I just came my period. I had spots down here. I had some spots on my chin and a few up here and a bunch in my hairline. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is a nightmare. But I put on a peel from Alpha H followed by some drying spot cream, left that overnight, then washed it in the morning, did a quick face mask and oh my gosh, my skin is looking so much better now. So let me know if you want a whole tutorial on my how I get rid of spots overnight sort of routine. Let's get going. I've already, well, I was about to say I've washed my hair. That's a lie. I actually just wet it and then did my super quick lazy girl hair curl routine, which takes seven minutes, which I've also just done a tutorial video on. So feel free to check that out if you want to know what I've done with my hair. But you can just take that up out the way right now because we don't need that. Okay. So, first things first, this is very much going to be a completely natural makeup. Often when you go to castings they say, don't wear any makeup or wear very minimal makeup because they want to see the real shape of your face, your real bone structure, they want to see what your skin looks like and you're there so that they can see you in real life. They don't need to know what your face looks like with tons of makeup on or photoshopped because that's what your portfolio is for. Definitely very much gonna be a no makeup makeup look and that can mean different things for different people. You have to focus on defining and accentuating the areas which you feel need to be defined for you depending on what your face looks like because everyone's face is different and then also covering up your problem areas. So for me, I struggle often with dark bags under my eyes. So I do some under eye sticky mask patches. I do face masks. And for me, I will just make sure I put a bit of concealer under there. But for some people, they may not need to put any concealer under there because that is not a problem area for them. So it very much depends on your face, but I'm gonna show you what I do. So hopefully you can take that and just make that work for you. So first of all, I'm just gonna go in with a very light moisturizer. I'm just using this Olay Beauty Fluid day normal dry combo this is just my standard moisturizer because depending on what you're casting for and depending on how many castings you have sometimes you want to go for a very dewy healthy especially if it's a sports casting or perhaps a catwalk casting or probably not a tv commercial casting but if there's something you might want to go for a dewy healthy look i might use a slightly heavier moisturizer but if i know i have quite a few castings throughout the day and i'm not going to want to be shiny by the end of it then I am personally, because I have oily skin, I'm gonna go in with a quite a light level moisturizer. So just put that in. And then if you use primer, if you know primer works for your skin, you know, go in with a primer as well as, or instead, however you make things work for you. Now I'm going in with the stick of concealer. The name is rubbed off. I have no idea what this actually is. <laughs> But the color is Cool Deep 5A. So yeah, if any of you recognize the packaging of this, please tell me what it is. So I'm just going to go in with a bit of concealer because like I said, my under eye bags is for me one of my problem areas that I want to cover up. I blended that in, but I actually, I have a lot of freckles and I don't want it to cover them. So I'm just taking this clean-ish corner of my beauty blender, which is also slightly damp. I'm just gonna get rid of that excess because I do not want to cover these freckles. Now I'm going in with Beauty UK Matte Fix Foundation tone in warm sand this is a slightly lighter color than what i would wear so sort of perhaps the color if i were to contour that i would go in with but i'm going in just 
again to the eye bags because for me that is one area that I want to cover and just bringing a little bit of a lighter tone. So some people really do not have dark circles under their eyes and often people with browner tones of skin, light brown, will struggle with eye bags. So whether you feel you need to do this or not is up to you. I'm also going back in with the concealer around the edges of my nose on my spot. Just to cover those up. Also, I'm just gonna go in on my forehead a bit because I want to just make that. I'm just blending with my finger because I do not wear makeup ever. Okay, that's a lie. I wear makeup nearly every day, but I don't do my own makeup because I am terrible at it. I have makeup put on me a lot, obviously at work, but at doing my own makeup, I am very, very bad. However, I'm getting better. I pick up a lot of useful tips from the amazing makeup artists that I work with. So in my opinion, it's better to leave a spot very, very visible than to try and cover it with concealer and end up with a cakey effect because to be honest, that just makes it even more noticeable. So if you have one really big bad spot, everybody knows that you're human, especially if you're female, you have at least one spot that you usually get every month as your hormones change. So do not freak out trying to mentally cover back in a little bit more with the lighter colour foundation again. Just squeezed out a tiny bit on the edge of my beauty blender. This is how I like to apply it. Gonna go a little bit on the chin and some through the forehead just because it is a lighter shade to bring a little bit of light into that area. But to be honest, most days if I wasn't having a bad skin day, I wouldn't do any of this so far. I would have done a little light bit of concealer under the eyes and that's it. I would not have done the rest of this concealer. Now I'm going in with this Bare Minerals Original SPF 15 Foundation in Tan. This is a powder, looks like this. And the brush that I'm just going to buff it on with is the N81W, I think it's face and body foundation brush from The Body Shop. Just going to swirl. Sometimes I like to buff and sometimes I like to pat. It depends what my skin is doing that day, but wearing a mineral foundation for castings is really, really great because it just gives you this sort of Photoshop skin look. Your skin will just look very, very flawless, but also very, very natural, like you're not wearing anything. It will even it out all over completely and you would just then chuck this brush into your handbag or your casting bag or your portfolio bag, your backpack, whatever. And then before you go into each casting, just on the nose and up the forehead to make sure that you're not too shiny unless it's a sports casting because you might want to look glowy. I think I'm going to go for a little bit of a buff through here for a very very light contour definition and also over the forehead just because it's a bit bumpy today. Pat under the eye and also what's great about mineral foundations is if you do have freckles like me then they will still show through which is what we want because freckles are very, very in fashion right now and clients often love to see a freckle. Next, we're going into the eyebrows. And I'm just using the Professional Eyebrow Pencil from Rimmel London in Black Brown. I know a lot of people a while ago started using all of these really elaborate and crazy eyebrow sort of kits with powder and gel and all these things, but I always stuck with this because it's what I've always used. Like I said, I'm very, very lazy. I'm not great at makeup and this is just very simple. Simple. I love the fact that it has a brush on the end because fluffy brows are also in and you want to make sure that your brows are nice and brushed all the time. Once again, very, very natural. So you want to make sure the end of your pencil or whatever you're using is nice and sharp. We're not looking to fill, we're looking to add individual brush strokes. So they look like individual hairs. We just don't want it to look like these big block brows. We want it to just look like your brows are naturally like that. I fill my brows in just a little bit most days and most people don't even notice. That's the way I like it. I have quite good brows except I have gaps here, which just looks like I've overplucked it, but that's just the way my brows naturally fall. I'm actually using a hair growth serum on my eyebrows at the moment. I've only just started using it. I'm hoping to see some improvements so I can give you guys a brow tutorial on this serum if it actually works. Just fill in sort of as if there were a few extra hairs. See what I mean? I literally just did six strokes and it already looks so much better. <laughs> I also like to go in just under this section of the brow here just to give an extra few hairs so that that also looks a little bit more defined. <laughs> Brush that through. Brushing up and out to give a nice natural fluffy brow shape. The key to makeup for castings is really just do it naturally. So if you can do a great 
natural brow with a whole gel kit, then by all means do that. It just really needs to look natural and not fake natural. It really just needs to look like you're not wearing anything. Unless they specifically ask, they're not going to expect you to turn up completely, completely barefaced. They're gonna expect you to be wearing a little bit, but just not tons. Now I'm going in with the 24 hour brow setter from Benefit. My brows are very fluffy, as you can see, and just about the most unruly things you could ever imagine. I've tried pretty much every brow gel out there. For one that just stops them from sliding down and doing that. Forever at work, the makeup artist is constantly, constantly having to rebrush up my brows. I would definitely, definitely recommend this brow gel. For casting, this is great because you might be hectically running around town all day, getting caught in the wind, in the rain, whatever. You don't want to get there and have your eyebrows sloping down your face and also like I said fluffy brows are in I love this I take it everywhere actually that's a lie I don't take it everywhere because I only ever need to use it once at the beginning of the day <laughs> sleek face form contouring and blush palette so it's that one which is actually the bronzer but for me I like to go in with it as a little light dusting eyeshadow because I was told once by a makeup artist that because I have quite small eyelids, I only need one colour on my eyes because I always was trying to do these beautiful, beautiful cut crease double colour things that you see all the makeup YouTubers doing and it looked horrific because I have quite small eyelids. This is a step that I'd say most people will probably skip unless you really do have a colour that will make your eyes pop without making you look like you're wearing anything because this is essentially sort of my skin tone, just a bit more bronzy, goldy with a shimmer. I will just brush a little bit onto the eyelid, take the brush into the crease and just fluff it in in there because that also will give your eye shape a little bit of definition <laughs> blend it out with my finger just so there's no sort of line i love working things into the skin with the fingers because actually the heat from your hands warms the makeup and actually makes it spread better it's less cakey and less sits onto the skin more works in and with the skin the brush i used there was from bella pierre it is shadow brush number 35 now I'm going in with some completely random and quite rubbish brush actually. But I'm just gonna take the highlighter again from that sleek palette. I like to do this because the highlighter on this palette is quite a goldy color. So for me, it does look very natural on my skin tone. But for some people, this may just be way too much for the look. Highlight in that eyebrow arch because that opens up your eyes and makes your eyes look a bit bigger. For some people, it's a terrible idea because if you have quite big eyes, then you don't want to look bug-eyed. So, you know, these things very much depend on the way your face is shaped, but definitely you just have to work what's right for you. You know, I always do that on the cupid's bow. And to be honest, by the time I've left the house, it's like rubbed off, so. Also a little bit down the bridge of the nose. That's very much depending on how I'm feeling. Don't always do the bridge of the nose. Now, one thing I do almost every single day, whether I'm wearing makeup or not, is just curl my eyelashes because, you know, it just, if you don't have eyelashes that are naturally very curled, I don't think anybody's eyelashes are naturally crazy curled. I think just curling your eyelashes still looks very natural because you don't have any mascara on, but it really just opens up your eye. So I do this to my guy friends sometimes. I do this when I'm not wearing makeup almost every day. These eyelash colors are actually very rubbish. So if anybody could recommend some good eyelash colors, I really need a new pair. Now, the thing is you have to bear in mind with castings is they will nine times out of ten be taking pictures of you now if you know what kind of casting it's going to be you can know how you need to do your makeup but if you have a full day full of castings then you just want to do a little bit of everything to cover all bases if they're not taking photos of me and I want to look completely barefaced and natural I will just curl the lashes and not do any mascara but if they are taking photos of you just to make your eyes you know stand out from the rest of your face you're gonna want at least a little bit of mascara you don't want it clumpy you do not want it spider like you don't want it smudged you don't want it on your eyelids so literally the very, very minimum. For this, I really, really love Avon's mascara. Avon Super Shock. I've got Super Shock True Color and Super Shock Volume. The reason I love these is mostly so with the brush because this brush is very much like a hairbrush. It just brushes it through. So it really is very no mascara mascara. On my freshly curled lashes, with the tiniest bit. When I put mascara on the bottom lashes, it really, really shows. It really makes them very, very long. So I'm only going in on the top lashes. I'm sure you can see the difference. It's very, very minimal. 
I do not bother taking the mascara out with me because we don't want to reapply. That's already plenty. Take whatever brush I use to put on the eyeshadow because sometimes you get that crease throughout the day and you just want to wipe that away because that's a really telltale sign that you're wearing makeup. Now to keep it natural, I'm just going in with this pink cheek and lip stain from Bella Pierre. We're just applying this with the fingers. So I'm just going to take a little bit out of there on that. Put it onto the back of my hand. I much prefer using a lip stain or even lipstick sometimes for color on the cheeks because you can warm it up as it is not a powder and it doesn't cake. You can really work it into the moisturizer or the base or just your skin, whatever's underneath without it looking really fake. Just going to smile so that you can see the apples of my cheeks on the round and work it up this line just below where you would put highlighter if you were adding highlighter and really will define that bone structure of your face. I like to work a little bit over the bridge of the nose so that you look slightly sun kissed and healthy. You can still see my freckles through this which is great because then it really does look like I'm not wearing too much because I'm not wearing too much. Now depending on what highlighter you have or what highlighter you use, I'm going back in with the same sleek palette from earlier. A really tiny, tiny amount. I actually almost don't even want to. Often powder highlighters can look obvious. I do have a creamy highlighter that's a similar lipstick consistency like I did with the Bella Pierre cheek stain, but that's quite pigmented so I don't want to go in with that because it will be way too obvious. On the lips, classic Vaseline or whatever you have, chapstick, just so they look moisturised because if your lips aren't a natural colour, it is a dead giveaway. What you can always do, but I'm too lazy to, if you do have freckles, is go and put them back in with a sort of eyebrow pencil or something. I have this Lawless Eyeliner, which is from Beauty by Loretta. Purely for the purposes of this video, I wouldn't usually do it. Go back in for a few freckles over the top, just if you really want to make sure that that client knows that you have freckles and then pat them in. However, if you don't have freckles, you do not want to turn up to a casting with a bunch of fake freckles because they might book you for your freckles and when you turn up to the job with no freckles, you might get in trouble. That's pretty much it. Whatever you do to finish off, I just have some rose water, which actually is just some random rose water that I bought when I was in Marrakesh, so. We are good to go. That is it. I think my skin looks quite natural, dewy, fresh, healthy. I don't take anything out for touch-ups except foundation powder brush to do the forehead, potentially the nose and the chin because I have oily skin and I don't want to shine. The eyeshadow brush just to make sure you get rid of those creases that might develop throughout the day and Vaseline just because that's always good. Some mints as well, pop a little mint on your way in just, I don't know, in case they want to look at your skin really close and you just ate a turkey sandwich or tuna sandwich or I don't know. Depending on what kind of casting it is and whether they're taking photos probably want to make sure that your skin doesn't get shiny before you go in because that's just going to reflect and not look great also if they're taking photos with flash photography it really will wash and wipe you out and make you look very very ill and very sick because it will just really highlight the difference in color in your face so if you have dark bads it's just going to accentuate them if your cheeks are a bit pale if you haven't seen the sun it's just going to accentuate them if you're going for potentially an e-com casting or one where you know they're going to be taking photos with flash photography you're going to want a little bit of something on your skin just because it's gonna make you look worse than you actually are. That's it for my casting makeup tutorial. I'm now ready to go out to my castings today, so wish me luck and I hope this helps you out. Good luck with all your castings, girls and guys. Good luck with your castings, everyone. <laughs> and yes, I know I am still not filming in my room. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, right. Just go and view the video on the situation with my room, okay? Don't come for me.